Okay, next we move on the topic of solemnization of marriage. Okay, uh, at the end of this topic, the students are able to first explain the various procedures to solemnize a marriage, second to differentiate one type of procedure compared to another type of procedure, number three to apply the relevant principles of procedure of marriage into a real situation. So we will refer uh, to Law for Marriage and Divorce Act 1976 in order to discuss the solemnization of marriage. And I hope that you have a copy with you in order to understand better uh, this topic. As stated in LRA, there are four ways. There are four ways to solemnize a marriage, whereby the first one is marriage by way of certificate. Number two, marriage by way of license. Number three, marriage through religious ceremony. And last, marriage abroad. So first, we will move on the marriage by certificate. According to marriage by certificate, this is the normal procedure where all, all the non-Muslim will uh, solemnize their marriage through this way. Uh, for the parties who intend to marriage by way of certificate, they need to bring the notice and sign the notice in the prescribed form to the registrar of the marriage district in which such party has been resident for the period of seven days immediately preceding the giving of such notice if both the parties have been resident in the same district only one notice is needed so here the notice is come from the parties who intend to marry according to section 14 of our LRA next the notice should also become accompanied by a written declaration the written declaration saying that one or both parties have been resident in the marriage district for the period of seven days immediately preceding the giving of such notice and either each of the parties is 21 years of age or over or in the case if the parties is a minor or and did not previously marry and the female party is not uh, above is not below 16 years old so here the written consent from the parent or guardian is necessary and number three no lawful impediment to marriage and number four neither the parties to the intended marriage is married to any person under any law religion custom or usage so here it means that the written declaration should also contain that the parties who intend to contract the marriage has fulfilled all the relevant requirements or basic requirements in the to valid marriage and this declaration should be made in writing when the registrar has received the notice from the parties according to section 15 of our LRA the registrar should publish the notice by posting a copy of the notice in his office visible to the public and until he grants his his certificate under section 17 or until three months have elapsed whichever is the earlier so here it means that if the, if the certificate can be issued less than three months so the uh, certificate will be granted earlier okay after the registrar has published the copy of the notice in his office then according to section 17 of LRA the registrar shall at any time after the expiration of 21 days from the date of publication of the notice issues the certificate for marriage in the prescribed form prescribed form and this can be only be done after payment of the prescribed fee by the parties and take note please take note that the certificate is only lasted for six months only and in the case if no marriage taken place within these six months then the party need to apply for fresh notice okay in the case if there is any caveat from any other person against the issuance of a certificate of marriage then the person can enter into the caveat whereby the caveat shall contain the name of the person place of residence of the person and the grounds of objection of the person and the person must sign the caveat next when the registrar when the registrar receives the caveat he shall not issue a certificate of marriage unless first after inquiring into the matter 
he satisfied that the there is no value to prevent the issuance of certificate or the person who entered into caveat has withdrawn the caveat and in the case if the certificate has been denied the parties who intend to solemnize the marriage can appeal to the high court for the refusal and the solemnization of marriage can only be done after the certificate for marriage has been issued by the registrar in the case if the certificate is not issued yet so the person the person cannot contract to marriage if they contract a marriage at that particular time without the certificate the marriage will become void and the marriage shall take, take place at the office of the registrar with open doors within the hours of 6 in the morning and 7 in the evening so for in the solemnization of marriage we will refer to this video whereby the registrar need to address the parties in the following words as stated in section 23 of LRA I'm reading you do I understand that you Sim Chen Yi and you Miss Penny, Miss Penny are here of your own free will for the purpose of becoming man and wife yes they notice then that by the solemnization of your marriage before these witnesses here present according to law you consent to be legally married for life of two each other and that this marriage cannot be dissolved during your lifetime except by a right judgment of the court and if either of you shall during the lifetime of the other contract another marriage however and where so ever so ever so nice why the marriage subsists you will thereby be committing an offence against the law and the solemnization should also be attested by two witnesses other than the registrar and the uh, entry will be signed by the registrar solemnizing the marriage after the signing of the, of the entry by the registrar that is the end of the procedure for marriage by certificate in a way that marriage by license is only granted for those who are who did not reach the uh, the minimum level of age as stated in section 10 where the male uh, is below than 18 years old and the female is below than 16 years old and also those who uh, within prohibited degree but the religion custom and usage allows them to marry so here they need to obtain the license from the chief chief minister so the chief minister may grant the license in the prescribed form prescribed form authorizing the solemnization of a marriage and the license uh, given by the chief minister is only lasted for one month only so it means that the person need to solemnize their marriage within one month because the license will be lapsed after one month and if any persons want to enter caveat this the person can enter the caveat uh, as stated in section 19 uh, and the, the registrar after receive the caveat and if any person who objected to the marriage who want to object for the marriage he can enter caveat and the same procedure will be applied as what has been stated what have been discussed in the marriage by way of certificate for those who want to contract a marriage by way of license the marriage will become void if no license given or issued by the registrar or chief minister and this marriage can be solemnized in such place other than in the office of registrar as such time may be authorized by a valid section issued by the registrar and the solemnization of marriage will be the same like what have been discussed in the section 23 as in marriage by way of certificate and it also need to be tested by two witnesses and signed by the registrar okay that is number two next we move to marriage through religious ceremony custom or usage in this particular uh, ways of solemnization the party normally intend to uh, solemnize their marriage by way of customary law in this in this type of marriage the party can solemnize the marriage in a church 
or temple or at any other place of marriage in accordance with section 24 at any such time as may be permitted by the religion, custom or usage. And the marriage can be solemnized by assistant registrar if the parties have fulfilled all the requirements of a valid marriage. Okay. In the case if no statutory declaration has been issued, so the marriage will become void. For those who can solemnize this type of marriage is normally appointed by minister, by name or office, any person, whether public office or not, to be assistant registrar of marriages in respect of any race, clan, association, church or temple. So from here, it can be uh, the solemnization of marriage can be done by priest, monk or any person who is authorized in the religion. And when the person has been appointed as assistant registrar, he can therefore solemnize the marriage. And this marriage is um, need to be attested by two witnesses, and the assistant registrar must remind the party solemnizing the marriage must be a single person. He must not a married person. And lastly, the registrar need to sign the entry of the marriage. Next. We move to marriage abroad. This is normally chose by the person who resident in Malaysia but did not domicile in Malaysia because they are far from Malaysia. According to section 26 of LRA, the marriage can be solemnized by the registrar appointed under subsection 28 section 4 of Malaysian Embassy, High Commission or Consulate in any country which has not notified the government of Malaysia of its objection to solemnization of marriages at such a Malaysian embassy, Malaysian uh, embassy, high commission or consulate, provided that the registrar satisfied that one of both parties to the marriage is a citizen of Malaysia, and each party has the capacity to marry according to this act. Either party is not domiciled in Malaysia, the proposed marriage will be regarded as valid in the country where such party is domiciled and the notice given at least 21 days before the marriage has been, the marriage intended to be solemnized. And for the procedural part, the same procedure will be applicable for them. However, the place, only the place is different. So any other requirements stated in the previous discussion will also be applicable for those who uh, want who intend to solemnize the marriage by way of a marriage abroad now we come to the most important part of solemnization of marriage which is registration of the marriage no matter how you solemnize the marriage but you need to register the marriage even the person who is studying abroad and uh, getting married abroad still they need to register so the registration is very important as we know that register registration is very important so what will be the effect if the party did not register their marriage there are two views pertaining to this issue the first view saying that the contract is still valid the marriage contract is still valid and this has been illustrated in the case of Leong Wishing and Chai Siu Yin in this case, the court said, said that the contract is still valid. So in order to understand why, what is the reason uh, the judge uh, upheld that particular principle, so you need to find this particular case and understand the fact of the case. And the second view saying that the contract is void. So the party need to remarry again or marry again and solemnize their marriage again. And this has been illustrated in the case Yo and Chu and uh, that is the end of my lecture.